Who doesn't like a green lawn? Fertilization of plants can result in additional growth and production of leaves, stems, branches, and roots. The appropriate fertilizer applied at the correct rate and time can help maintain a healthy, friendly Florida landscape, which can prevent soil erosion and reduce nutrient runoff and leaching. We must think of fertilizer as a tool for delivering nutrients to plants. As with any tool, it's important that you understand how to safely use it. Join me as we cast a spotlight on fertilizer and the ordinance Charlotte County has on its use. Fertilizer is excellent for improving the quality of your landscape, yet when it ends up in the water supply, it's not so great for water quality. We have to think about things as uh, in terms of what it was like before we were here. What was the system like before we moved in and, and therefore what the harbor has evolved into being able to accept and accommodate. As a result, many Florida counties have implemented fertilizer bans which prohibit the application of any fertilizers containing nitrogen or phosphorus. Pretty much every county that's on the coast or even a few urban inland counties have a fertilizer ordinance. And what it does is it spells out what type of fertilizer you can use and when. So for example, right now, June 1st to September 30th, we're in the restricted season when you can't use nitrogen or phosphorus. This is the time of year during the wet season when we have, we're supposed to have rains, you know, almost every afternoon where anything that we put on the ground is likely going to wind up here in the harbor. Fertilizer ordinances begin as a way to lessen runoff and improve water quality during Florida's rainy season. Places like the harbor, systems like the harbor, are able to withstand inputs and inflows and events to an extent. If, say, something like uh, a major spill or major inflow of nutrients were to incur in a place like Charlotte Harbor that didn't previously have any impairments, that had no other inputs of, of nutrients, um, that had no existing issues, Depending on the size of the event, there's a, there's a solid chance that the harbor would be able to absorb that to an extent um, and that we may not see as many negative events. But the problem is that over time, over years, the constant inflow of nutrients, the constant input of these things builds to a point where the harbor can't absorb impacts if you have a major inflow event. And so you'll see you know, widespread or you could see things like widespread blooms. Um, or, or significant uh, impairment of, of aquatic health. One of the best ways to reduce or eliminate the need for fertilizer is to stick with native vegetation in your landscape. These plants are already well suited to grow in the Florida soil. Flower friendly landscaping. So there's nine principles starting with right plant, right place. And uh, so there's nine t uh, principles in total, but they're all common sense things people may be already doing already, and it's gonna be proper watering, common sense, common sense pest management, uh, protecting the waterfront, composting. So they're, they're just nine simple principles, and you know we've got literature and information online and at our office about it. With severe losses of seagrasses at a 23% loss over the last couple of years, coupled with the death of filter feeding animal beds. The harbor is extremely stressed. It's now more important than I think it has been uh, in past years uh, to really be mindful of, of our role uh, and, and our potential impacts in the system. If you would like to know more about the county's fertilizer ordinance, you can contact the UF IFAS Extension Office at 941-764-4340 or visit charlotte.ifas.ufl.edu. For CCTV Spotlight, I'm Tom Lloyd.